What's your minimum specification? Hi everyone, I'm Ian Cutris, and you're watching Tech Tech Potato. Today, custom CPUs for Formula 1. I'm going to tell you how and why. So, companies, when they combine to collaborate, they'll leverage each other's co-brands to help um, drive sales and just, you know, promote off another. Um, AMD and Ferrari are two such companies. And back in 2010, they had um, a strong partnership uh, that covered multiple areas to the point where we got this. This is the Acer Ferrari One. This is a branded netbook. If you remember the old netbook days, this has an AMD dual core cat cores. This is one of the very super slow machines back in the day. Um, I actually got this based on a grant through my university at the time, uh, you know, 2010, 2011, and uh, paid half price, which is probably means that it was actually the normal price for a netbook. And I used this for about two to three years as, you know, my main mobile PC for when I was doing that work. And it fared up quite well. I even took it to a LAN party once and managed to play some Counter-Strike. I obviously installed the, the low poly count pack um, for that. And, you know, I got a gameable frame rate on it, but it's a just a nice design system, actually. It's a bit heavy and it's a bit slow. And ultimately, that's not what a Ferrari is. Um... However, you know, beyond the sort of Acer devices, uh, AMD and Ferrari had a Formula One partnership. Uh, and it kind of looked like this. We have the AMD logo on uh, the rear wing. Um, that's, you know, the old AMD logo. And as a title sponsor, you know, they got various benefits therein. Um, and the reason why this relationship came about um, is because AMD spun off its fabrication facilities, uh, what we now call Global Foundries. Um, and it was spun off to a uh, group of investors, uh, the major one of which is called Mubadala, um, you know, based in the Middle East. And you can actually see here on the bottom left, we have Mubadala Abu Dhabi. Um, that Mubadala also owned a stake in Ferrari. So as you might expect, they came together and it was a partnership. Now, these partnerships um, can be two elements. They can just be, hey, let's co-brand and you know benefit off each other's brand, or because Formula One is very technical, let's develop a technical partnership. And this is what happened. Um, so this is you know sort of 2010 era, turn of the decade, uh, and all these Formula One teams are doing what's called computational fluid dynamics. Now, CFD, uh, just to bring up a picture here, it is where you're essentially modeling the airflow around uh, the car, the aerodynamics. You're trying to calculate downforce. You're trying to calculate, um, you know, how things wobble. And some of the bits on the one part actually move under load because um, when you're driving fast, the, the air gets more in the way and you have to decide, well, how can I move the air out of the way and how can I also stick the car to the ground? So you've got to find the right mix of downforce of power um you know when you're behind another car or whatever so there are two ways to do this one of them is computational fluid dynamics um, as i'm showing here this is uh, a picture from simscale and simscale is a cfd software tool you know they actually say key industries using cfd analysis automotive it's not only f1 that does it your road car likely also has cfd analysis done on it but in, in Formula One, um, you either do CFD or you do what's called wind tunnel analysis, where you put a car um, and you suck air through it and then you see how it affects all the different parts of the vehicle. Now, back in 2010, uh, CFD was still, you know, it wasn't young, but it was used in conjunction with wind tunnel analysis. And there was actually one team called Mana GP, or, or what was later called Virgin and Virgin Marussia, um, they aimed to go CFD only, which was a big ask at the time. Um, but as a result of that, and as a result of, uh, you know, teams like Ferrari, uh, like McLaren, they could literally spend, spend, spend as much as they wanted on getting all the CFD analysis that they needed. They would just buy racks and racks and racks of servers and just keep running simulation, simulation, simulation. Uh, this was an area of Formula One where uh, road testing was unlimited. Um, what the FIA did, the organization that essentially gives the rules to Formula One, 
is they decided to limit in combination with wind tunnel testing and CFD actually how much you could do. Now what the FIA did is they essentially meant said that if you want to do all CFD that's fine but you get no wind tunnel time or if you want to do all wind tunnel time you get to do no CFD or you could do a mixture of the two and your wind tunnel time was dedicated by how many hours you spent uh, in the wind tunnel and your CFD time was you know based on a very complex calculation. If you actually want to read about this I suggest um, going into the details of this race car engineering here uh, Gemma Hatton has done a really nice uh, article explaining all the regulations up to 2018 and there are a couple of newer articles explaining you know the regulations beyond that. Um, I'm going to focus more on the sort of 2010 um, and uh, the FIA here wasn't necessarily com computer savvy which is a weird thing to say for Formula One um, but what they essentially did is take the CPU that you were using um, and the peak flops, the peak number of floating point operations that CPU could do became how much that CPU was worth. So if your CPU could do four gigaflops and you had 100 CPUs, that was 400 gigaflops. And it doesn't matter whether you were actually using all the compute every cycle, every second. So if your simulation was memory bound, for example, and you were waiting on uh, stuff to come from memory, the time that the CPU was actually taking, that counted towards your allocation. It's kind of like how cloud services work today. When you take an, you know, an Amazon instance, you pay for time, you don't pay for compute. So this was essentially time. Um, so what this meant was, if you had a CPU that was only 10% active, you were essentially getting a tenth of the CFD you know, worth of that CPU. So this is where AMD comes in, AMD being a partner for Ferrari. Um, 2010, everybody's using kind of Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge systems. Uh, what AMD did in 2010 um, with the Opteron 6127, and I actually have one here. Uh, I've got another one somewhere uh, based for this Opteron board behind me. Um, what for the, so that was the 2010 version, the 6127, and in uh, 2012 they had the 6275, which was actually codenamed the Fangio, uh, which is named after a Formula 1 racing driver in the early 50s. Um, what that chip did is they cut away some of the floating point performance on the chip. Um, so technically the 16 core version, um, let's see if I have it up here. Yeah, so 6275, this is a 2012 chip, 16 cores, um, but instead of it having all of its floating point access, it, they reduced it down to two floating, two floating point operations per second, uh, per cycle, sorry. Um, as a result, the whole CPU went down from 250 gigaflops all the way down to 75 gigaflops. Now, that sounds like a considerable, you know, leap. That's like, you can now use four you know, was it four and a third CPUs in the space of what you could do with one? But the thing is, because CFD analysis uh, doesn't actually use all those floating point units all the time, um, actually the, it was using more of the peak performance of the 75 gigaflop version, the 6275, than the 250 gigaflop version, which is the 6276. Now, if we go here, you can see that uh, this 6275, it's 115 watts, and the processor has a floating point unit capped to two double precision floating point operations per cycle per module. Um, so this meant that Ferrari could essentially do four times the amount of CFD analysis that everybody else could do under the same uh, floating point restrictions. Um, there isn't much documentation about these CPUs, actually. Um, sometimes they come up for sale on eBay. That's where I got mine. Um, <laughs> the biggest source is actually uh, this guy, Joshua Mora. Um, he is involved in high performance computing, has been for a couple of decades now. Um, worked for AMD in a number of roles through the years. Uh, I've met him. He's a really nice guy to get to know. Um, I, I met him, I think, for Naples launch. And unfortunately he said I couldn't put my benchmarks into his system that he was running. Um, but he actually now works for NVIDIA, funnily enough, um, on their high performance computing. He's looking into optimizations for the next generation of high performance computing. So, so 2012, Ferrari has this AMD CPU that can essentially do, allows Ferrari to do four times 
more CFD analysis than everyone else. Now, Ferrari had the initial exclusive on this, but by about 2016, um, all the teams were using the either Ivory Bridge or AMD Fangio, what they call these AMD Fangio chips. Um, now, around the time, around 20, over between like 2016 and 2018, AMD, uh, sorry, the FIA changed how the flops were counted. So each CPU core could, was essentially counted as one, uh, one double precision flop per cycle. So that kind of evened out the spread of, uh, you know, between the Fangio chips and the Intel chips, and it just essentially became a core count difference. However, moving to the new architect, maybe moving to newer architectures didn't actually yield the specific performance um, gain that would have correlated with the cost. So not a lot of teams upgraded. Uh, it turns out that uh, in 2021, it looks like the regulations from uh, my sources, the regulations will allow unlimited CFD. So chances are we're going to see uh, a lot more differentiation in uh, what these Formula One teams use for their CFD analysis. We'll see uh, teams upgrading, and because for that year for Formula One, there's like overall cost caps, teams will have to decide where to spend the money on the CFD. Um, so you may think that's great for Ferrari, um, and Ferrari actually had um, a an advertising deal, uh, AMD had an advertising deal with Ferrari last year. Um, the 2019 season, we saw uh, Dr. Lisa Su being interviewed by Martin Brundle on the grid for the Chinese Grand Prix. Uh, there's the AMD logo right on the front there. This is an image from Ferrari.com. However, for 2020, um, AMD has signed for Mercedes. Um, as we know, AMD's uh, new Rome CPUs and the upcoming you know, Milan and Genoa, um, they're really driving floating point performance per core. Um, Intel obviously has ABX 512 um, on their uh, Cascade Lake Xeons, um, but Mercedes have decided to partner with AMD here, uh, likely to get you know new Radeon Instincts and uh, new CPUs. And whether they have an exclusive or not, we don't know, um, but it's going to be interesting to see. Um, now, f uh, if if unlimited. CFD in 2021 means, you know, everything we might see, uh, companies even using cloud resources, um, you know, going to AWS or uh, Azure and trying to use their cloud compute um, based on within the rules or whatever. Um, so that's a story of custom CPUs, you know, like these ones and uh, AMD's relationships in netbooks. Um, I've actually seen for uh, Lamborghini do one recently, but Lamborghini aren't in Formula One, unfortunately. Um, so uh, I've been Ian Cutris, you've been watching Tech Tech Potato, don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you for watching.